<laughs> hey, it's my first day. Uh, the uh, I used to sit in coffee shops tailing the drinks they served. By far the most successful, the uh, espresso-based drinks, I'm sure you know what it is, is the cafe latte, or the latte for short. Uh, a big part of its continued popularity is the liquid design produced by foaming milk and then beautifully pouring it just right. Today, I'm proud to introduce one of our most popular all-time presentations with World Barista Champion Latte Artist Heather Perry. Heading down now to Clatch Coffee in L.A. <laughs> Hi, uh, Heather, are you there in... Uh, I, I, I can't hear her, but if she's coming over for you uh, in the on the internet, that's fine. Dennis, I can't hear Heather. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're having a few, you know, little things like the internet crashing and stuff like that. Heather, can I, can you hear me? I can hear you great. Oh, you can hear me. Well, that's good. That's half the battle. Um, boy, I, yes. I wish I could get that at home. I, <laughs> where I, I can't hear, but I can, everyone can hear me. Okay, uh, it's the opposite usually in my house. Um, I just wanted to, uh, I just wanted to, I've uh, introduced you and I just wanted to know what you're going to do for us today. And I'll tell you what, I'll throw it to you and then I'll save any questions we get for the end. You got it. Sounds great. Thanks. So today we are going to do some latte art. Good morning, everybody. I hope you guys are all ready. All right. So we are going to go over some beautiful latte art. And we're going to start with talking about what makes really good latte art, okay? And there's a few basics that we look for when we're talking about what makes beautiful latte art. We're going to talk about definition and symmetry and balance and then complexity. Okay, so let's look at this beautiful design that we've got here for you. Let's start with first talking about definition. When it comes to latte art, for me, it's not enough to just get a design in a cup. I want something that's poured really well. I want something that has great technique to it. It doesn't need to be overly complex. I just want it done well. Simple but well to me is more important than complex and messy. So we're really gonna hone in on those details of how to really refine your pores today, okay? So starting with how do we get great definition? Because in order to do great art, you really wanna have beautiful definition there. Looking at this design here, you can see we've got beautiful two colors, okay? Brown and white. And when you want great latte art, that's what you want to see. You want to see just two colors. Looking at these these pores down here, they're not bad, but you can see they have a lot more shading to them. They've got a lot more beige kind of going on. A really beautiful, well done design. Two colors, brown and white. So you always want to go for great definition with whatever pour you're going for. The darker the brown, the crisper the white, the better the pour. So always be thinking about how do I improve my definition? All right, next up, symmetry. Looking at this design here again, you can see that T goes right through the design so beautifully. Not only does it go perfectly down the middle, but look at from side to side. Look at how even the leaves are all the way across the top. That's a really difficult thing to do, but that's what makes a beautiful pour stand out from the rest, is having that beautiful symmetry in the cup. Again, looking at these designs down here, they're not bad, but they're definitely not as good and not as detailed and not as refined as the one that we've got over here. Finally, balance. When you're pouring latte art, you want to create something that's beautifully balanced in the cup. So when you serve it to somebody, their eyes just rest on it and it just comes off as this gorgeous design to them. And it just sits so beautifully and perfect. No matter what size cup, no matter what the drink is, you just want the design to sit really balanced in the cup. And that's what we've got here as well. You can see this beautiful brown frame just helps to kind of set that design in the cup. Again, we come over to these ones and you can see they're nice, but your eyes are almost a little bit more distracted by how they aren't as balanced in the cup or how it's not as crisp. Your eyes don't rest as easily. So when we're talking about latte art, one of the things that I always find interesting is sometimes people are like, oh yeah, I'll just kind of pour and keep trying it. 
And don't do that. There's like real technique that you want to kind of do here to really improve your pour and get these beautiful crisp designs that really stand out to people. And that's what we're going to really talk about today is kind of the detail that you go that goes into the pour and the technique to really help elevate your pour to the next level. So how do we get these perfect pours that we just saw? First, it is all about your milk. Your milk, your milk, your milk. Latte art comes back to your milk each and every time, okay? So if you don't have great milk, do not pour it. One of the things that will make learning latte art so much more difficult for you is if you do not have consistent milk. So before you ever get to pouring, just steam. Steam, steam, steam. What I wanna see you do is take your steaming pitcher, whatever size pitcher you're gonna use, take whatever size cup you're gonna use, okay? And what I want you to do, steam your milk. Measure your milk before you steam. So let's say for this cup, I'm gonna use nine ounces of milk. I'm gonna put nine ounces of milk in here. I want you to steam it, and then I want you to pour it in the cup. And I want you to have enough to just fill the cup. You can measure it afterwards. Maybe you wanna have an ounce left, maybe you don't. But what I want you to do is get consistent milk each and every time. Meaning, if you steam and you don't have enough to fill your cup, you did not steam the same way you did previously, right? So measure your milk that goes into your pitcher to start with. That way, you know you're gonna have consistent milk. So when you start with Latte Art, pick one pitcher and one cup that's gonna kind of be your baseline. That way, you know you're using the same amount of milk each and every time, and you should achieve the same results with your milk each and every time. Okay, so when it comes to what type of milk to use. So today, I'm just gonna use whole milk. I do think whole milk works really well, really beautifully. Um, if you are into alternative milks, there's some beautiful ones out there right now. I would absolutely recommend picking up barista series of whatever kind of milk you're gonna do. There's some great ones. Try them all, see what works for you, see what you like. Um, the one thing I would avoid when you are learning latte art, avoid lower fat milks. You definitely want the whole milk is a three and a half percent and it works really well to help keep our foam and our milk combined as one homogenous liquid. And that's really important when it comes to pouring as you're gonna see later. So I do recommend starting with whole milk, honestly. I think it's the easiest, um, but whatever milk you're gonna do, pick one. Don't go from oat to whole to non-fat because they all are going to steam and pour slightly differently. Steaming is gonna be very similar for them. There might just be some small changes, but the pouring, there's gonna be some big differences between. So really do pick one milk that you're gonna go with as you are learning latte art, okay? So we've got our milk that we're gonna use, you've got your pitcher and your cup that you're gonna use. Now it comes in to steaming the milk, okay? So when you are steaming the milk, I'm gonna to go to this video now and kind of show you exactly what we are looking for. Steaming milk should be the easiest thing that you do because guess what? You have a machine that does it for you. You don't actually steam the milk. You just set everything up properly and then let the machine take over. Don't get in the way of the machine, just let it do its thing. So as you're gonna see the way I do it and the way you're gonna see on this video, super simple. So before you get all crazy with your steaming at home, try this technique and try and adapt it to see if you can make it work for you because this is gonna give you really easy, really consistent results, okay? So first thing that I wanna hone in on is our steam wand and our steam wand tip, okay? Almost every steam wand out there, home or commercial, is going to have a steam wand tip that's removable. And I don't care that it's removable right now, but what I do care about is that line where that knob, where that tip attaches to that wand. This is gonna kind of be our baseline, okay? So for instance, when I'm steaming milk for my lattes, I know I'm gonna submerge my steam wand so that my tip just covers these little round knobs on my steam wand tip. And that's where I'm gonna place my steam wand and position it every single time to give me super consistent milk. So you wanna find that kind of baseline for yourself, okay? So now I'm gonna play the video to talk about kind of what our next steps are. So when it comes down to what you're gonna see, Let's blow this video up for you guys. Beautiful. You can see I've got my steam wand tip in. You can see my steam wand is near the side of my pitcher, but it's not touching the side. Now, what you really want to hone in here is that beautiful whirlpool that we have going on with our milk. And that's what you want to be able to see your milk doing is you want to have that beautiful whirlpool going on, okay? That is the key that tells you you're on the right track. Notice, I did not move my steam wand once while I was steaming. I didn't push it up, I didn't push it down, I didn't do any of that stuff. The idea is, is that you find that place on your steam wand's tip where when you turn on your steam wand, you hear those little whispers kind of start, and then that's creating your foam. That foam creates volume. That volume raises up, covers up the steam wand tip so the milk can finish heating properly. Okay, so listen on this one. Always start with purging your steam wand. That's always gonna be step one. 
Then what we're gonna do, place it just like I said. I'm gonna get my steam on tip so it's just showing. Ready, I'm gonna turn it on. Hear those beautiful whispers? And now they're getting a little quieter. And a little quieter. And now my milk is just heating. And now I'm gonna turn it off. And I didn't touch it once, and I didn't do anything. And that's what you wanna do, is a whole lot of nothing when you are steaming. And that's gonna give you incredibly consistent results, time in and time out. Now the next thing, after you've got your beautifully steamed milk here, is you have to texture your milk. So let's go and look at what texturing our milk looks like, okay? So when we talk about texturing our milk, what we are looking for is that's giving us that homogenous mixture that we're talking about, right? That's keeping our milk and our foam combined, which is key when it comes to pouring. So if you look here at my milk, see that swirl that I'm doing here? This is my texture. If you ever take a class with me, you're gonna hear me say texture, 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 texture. I say it a thousand times in any pouring class because you have to make sure you are texturing your milk before you pour. We need to make sure we've got one beautiful, homogenous, glossy mixture here. That's what we are looking to get in order to get our beautiful latte art, okay? If we have foam and we have milk, it's gonna be much, much harder to pour and to get anything out consistently. So the reason we're texturing is we're just keeping everything combined. That same whirlpool that was happening while we were steaming, we're emulating with this texture. So this texture, see, just smooth, just easy. It's not this. If you're doing this and you're splashing, this is not what you wanna be doing. You need to rein that in, okay? Because that is not what we are looking to do. It should be smooth, it should be easy. If you need to, walk around with a glass of water and just swirl the water, keeping that nice smooth motion. It's not a choppy back and forth just nice and smooth. And you're gonna see in every video that you're gonna watch today, you're gonna see before I pour, I'm texturing. And I don't mean like I texture and then I wait for a few seconds and then I pour. I mean it's texture to pour because you wanna make sure that that is happening quick for you, okay? So what is the first key of latte art? Milk, milk, milk. Make sure you have good milk. Make sure you have consistent milk. So what I want you to first do is I want you to take your milk, take your pitcher, I want you to just steam, 10 times and then measure it. That's all you're gonna do. And you should end up with, use a measuring cup. Don't even use this cup. Start by measuring out nine ounces of milk or whatever it is that you wanna do. And then when you're done, you should have 11 ounces of milk and get that every single time. If you go from, if you start with nine ounces and then you go with 10 ounces and then it's 13 the next time you steam and then it's nine the next time you steam and then it's 10 the next time you steam, you're a hot mess. You gotta get it together. So remember, we wanna start with the same in and we wanna have the same out. That tells you you've got consistent milk. That tells you you are ready to pour. Now, what if you go to steam and you're not getting a whirlpool? That means you probably need to use a little bit less milk. So some home machines, obviously I'm working on a commercial machine today. If you're working on a home machine, you might say, man, I don't have enough, I don't have enough power from this machine to create that whirlpool. Switch to a smaller pitcher or something like this perhaps and use less milk. How much milk you use obviously relates to what size cup you are pouring into. So you might find, hey, at home, I've got to use a baby pitcher. I can only use four ounces of milk because that's what gives me that good whirlpool. But that's really the key that you want to find. Okay, so you might, instead of pouring into a larger cup like I am, you might choose to just go into a smaller pitcher and a smaller cup for your daily cup in order to get that really good milk, okay? So keep that in mind as well. Um, as far as what style pitcher you want to use, you can use whatever you want. Use whatever you've got at home, use whatever your machine came with. The biggest thing is you just need to make sure you've got a spout, okay? You don't wanna have a lift or a bell pitcher as we call it. You just need to make sure that you have a good spout. Outside of that, I kind of think barista tools, you know what I mean? I mean, it's like golf clubs, I would say. So it's kind of like, you know, I mean, when you're learning to golf, you use whatever golf clubs you've got around, right? When you're learning lots of art, you use what you've got. And then as you get better at it, you can start playing with different tools of the trade and seeing what you like and what you don't like and what kind of really helps to excel you. But don't think you need to go out and buy a certain type of pitcher or an expensive pitcher or anything like that or a special type of pouring cup. You can do it in anything, just make sure your milk is consistent. That is going to be so much more important than a specific type of pitcher or a specific type of cup. Consistent milk, consistent milk, consistent milk. I know you're thinking, is she ever gonna pour? Maybe not, because if you don't have consistent milk, then you will never pour. It starts with your milk. I cannot stress that enough. So many people take so much longer to learn lots of art than they need to because the more different your milk, every, the, 
every time your milk is different, you must change the way you pour. If my milk is thinner, I have to change different, I have to pour differently than if my milk is thicker. All of those make a difference. So the more inconsistent your milk is, the more you're just having to change and adapt and you're not getting the same results. You wanna make it easy on yourself to be successful. How do you set yourself up for success with latte art? Have great, consistent milk. I cannot stress that enough. Okay, I feel like I've stressed it, so. Again, going over the texture, this is just another video of that kind of texturing of the milk that we're talking about here. As your milk sits, your foam and your milk start to separate, as you can kind of see there, that texturing just brings them together for us. We just wanna pour one unit. If we don't, we'll have our foam plop out on us. Maybe you've done that before. Maybe you've had, oh man, I was pouring and it was all milk and then my foam just plopped because you didn't texture. You gotta texture, texture, texture. I know, I'm gonna say it a ton. You're gonna hear me say texture, texture, texture. It's not gonna stop. But now that we've got our good milk, all right, we've got our good milk, let's go on to the next step. So let's talk about how we are actually going to pour and our steps for pouring, okay? So first we need to get some shots in our cup. So I'm gonna get some shots going for us really quick. Um, how much espresso you use depends on what size cup you're pouring into. I'm using a 12 ounce cup here, so I'm gonna use two shots of espresso, pretty basic there. Uh, you can use whatever you like. If you like four shots, go for it. There are no rules saying how many shots have to go in a cup. It is all personal preference there, so do not worry about that. All right, and then while my shots are going, we're gonna go ahead and get our milk steaming as well, and we're gonna follow those same basic principles that we've been talking about the whole time. I'm gonna line it up and I'm gonna leave it. Kind of like a set it and forget it thing, if you will. Um, I promise you this technique, if you can make this work for you, will change your life. Oh yeah, look, hands off, no, look, ma, no hands. That's how you wanna do your steaming. Look, ma, no hands, that's what you wanna get to. It will give you the most consistent results. And again, latte art is all about your milk. I cannot stress it enough. Um, when you come to a lot tarot class, half of it is just milk because if you don't have good milk, nothing else matters. So really find a way where you can get super consistent milk from time to time. Okay, so we've got our shots. We've got our perfectly steamed milk here. Now you can either hold your cup, you can set it on the counter. It's kind of whatever's comfortable for you. This counter's a little high, so I'm probably just gonna set it on here because I don't need to like pour up here. Get like a nice loose position when you're ready to pour, right? Like you wanna be loose because we gotta let the milk flow out. So you can't like, I, I'm not somebody who can like pour up here all high and like stiff. Um, some people like to get really detailed and close. I like to kind of keep it more loosey goosey, if you will. All right, so texturing, texture, texture, texture your milk. Okay, we've got our shots here. We're gonna start when we pour, we're gonna pour so that our milk is, at our tip, excuse me, is about three inches away from our crema. You do not need to pour any higher than that. Um, any higher than that, and you're just kind of showing off for no good reason, frankly. So don't do that. Just start with your pour. Um, I like to start with my cup tilted. Personal preference there, you can do it either way. So we're gonna pour three inches from our crema, give or take, right into the center of the liquid, not the center of the cup, the center of the liquid. We're then gonna come close, and here, we're gonna pour a nice rosetta here to start us off today. And, ta-da! It's just that easy, people. It's not just that easy, it takes some work. But we've got a nice, beautiful frame around here. We have, all right, we have two and a half colors. I have a little bit of beige right there, I'll admit it. I don't like it, it could be better. Um, but it's got nice balance in the cup, it's got nice symmetry to it, it got a nice straight line, my leaves match up side to side. Um, so you got an idea here of how we start. Now, what other pours can we do? You don't start when you're with pouring a rosetta when you're learning lots here. That's a, probably another big mistake people make is they are seeing all these beautiful designs poured online and they come, they're like, I wanna pour a seven layer tulip with a heart on top and wings on the side. And that's not where we start, hon. Let's bring it back. We're gonna start with the beautiful circle. Don't be bummed. Circles are the most important part of latte art because they are the foundation for every other thing that you're going to pour. Um, so I pour circles all the time because they help rein me in. They help me refine my technique. They help bring me back to the basics, the fundamentals, okay? So circle, you are gonna start with a circle. And when you perfect a circle, you can move on to other things. But let's start by talking about a circle, all right? So we're gonna go back to the video now. So for our circle, Okay, ready? We are going to watch this video, I promise. Yes, here we go. All right, ready? So I'm starting three inches from the top. I'm pouring in the center of the liquid, center of the liquid. Bring my pitcher down. You can see the white starting to appear. And then I pour quickly into it while I level my cup. And 
ta-da, it's a beautiful circle. That's what you want to see there. Um, I do all my own stunts in this presentation. Thank you very much. So anyhow, continuing on, uh, my videographer, though, does cut me off at some awkward times. So bear with me on some of these videos. But you'll get the idea. So now let's watch the circle again, because this is, again, the foundation for every single thing that we're going to do. So you have to get this. When you start doing latte art, don't be like, oh, my circle's good enough. I'll move on. If it's not perfect, it's not good enough. It's a circle. Make it perfect. You can do it, OK? Don't settle. Make it perfect. Right, watching the circle again. Okay, so I texture, 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 texture. I pour. Okay, stop right there. So now you can see I'm not three inches from the crema. Okay, that's what we're talking about. That's where you should always start. If you have a smaller cup, you might start a little higher than the cup. If you have a really tall cup, you're not gonna start high from the cup because we don't need three inches from the cup. We need three inches from the crema is where we're looking to be there. Okay, so we're going again. Oh no, backspace it up, sorry. Okay, ready? So I'm gonna pause it again. Okay. So we're pouring, and now ready, watch right there. Okay, notice I bring the pitcher down to the cup, okay? There are three P's that we're gonna talk about today. Pace, proximity, position, okay? These three P's are how we are going to create beautiful art. They are the, they are the technique that make up our beautiful designs, okay? So you can see, I bring the pitcher down. We start with the pitcher a little bit higher so we can sink our foam below the crema, but then we get super close. So in order to build our design, we lay our foam on top of our crema, okay? That's, is, that's our proximity, that's our distance that we're talking about. So now we're super close. Now watch the speed of the pour. For all of these pours that we're doing, I want you to watch the three things, the pace, proximity, and the position. So the pace, watch the speed of the milk as we are pouring, watch the proximity, the distance of the pitcher or the spout more appropriately, the spout to the crema, okay, not to the cup, to the crema, um, and then the position. Watch where the, watch where the spout is positioned for each pour, okay? So I come nice and close, and now watch the pace. Look at how much, look at how fast, look how much milk is coming out right there. Speed is huge in latte art. Everybody is so worried initially when they're learning latte art about overflowing the cup, overflow it, get used to it, it's okay. Overflow the cup, it's fine. Pour over a sink if you want to as you're starting. That's totally cool, but get that milk out. The slower you pour, the more your milk and your foam separate, and the harder it is to actually get your design onto your cup. So don't be afraid of speed. Speed is your friend when it comes to this, all right? So we're gonna be aggressive in our pours. I say that a lot. Be aggressive, be aggressive, be aggressive with your milk. Get that milk out, okay? And then as I level my cup, my design finishes. Okay, so we're gonna watch the circle one more time. Because what I want you to watch this time, I start with my cup leveled, which I think makes for an easier pour. It's a little bit of, um, honestly, tomato, tomato. You'll see people do it both ways. Uh, I like to tip my cup because it allows me to get my spout closer to my crema easier is a big reason that I like to do it. Um, and then the other reason is because if I have my cup right here and I have my espresso on top, if I tip my cup, it allows me to pool my espresso. So I have a bigger, deeper well, so I can end up with a nice brown top, which is what I want. I want to maintain, remember we want that definition. We want just those two colors. So it gives me better definition by maintaining that brown crema on top. If I kind of pool it so that I can sink that foam um, and keep that layer on top. Okay, we're gonna watch the circle one more time. Here we go, ready? And we're pouring, and now we're coming close. Okay, right here, I'm pausing. So watch the liquid right here. Watch at the back of the cup, okay? You're gonna see that I level my cup, I set it down at the same pace that my cup is filling, okay? So watch this, and now my pour speeds up fast, 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 right there, right there, right there, right there, right there. So notice how slow, my cup does not go, okay? My cup does not go from here to here. It goes from here to here. Make sense, see that? It goes with it. As I'm pouring and my cup is filling, it's loving. It's not here, here, which is one mistake that people make that we'll get to. So pay attention to that in all of these designs as well. Okay, so I think we've got the circle down, You great? We've got the foundations. We're gonna pour on the center. We're gonna come close. We're gonna pour quickly to get that foam out to build our big, beautiful circle. And then we're going to level as we fill. Now, let's go to the heart. Now, the fun thing about the heart is once you've got the circle down, you are right there for a heart. But do not skip the circle. Do not start with a heart. You're gonna make a fail mistake that I'll get to later. Do not start with the heart. Start with the circle, okay? So, for the heart, 
we're gonna do the same exact thing. Ready, watch the video. Texture, texture, texture. Come, ready, three inches. Come down and pour and level and level and level and level and level and level. And I'm gonna stop it right there and pause it. Look, my cup is totally full. That is key. When you are pouring a heart, you don't cut it until your cup is full. Okay, you don't cut it when you're an inch from the top. You don't cut it when you're getting close to the top. You don't cut it when you think it's gonna overflow. All the way full. Fill that sucker up and then you cut it. Watch how little milk kind of goes through in that cup. That cup is slow and intentional and deliberate. You are not just like whoosh and rushing it through. Do not rush it. That will ruin all of the hard work you put into up to this point, which is why you start with a circle because you've learned patience. You've learned the pause by starting with a circle. So now with the heart, you're ready to just, ready back to the video. Ah, gently cut it. Look how slow that pull through was. Slow, deliberate, intentional. That's what you're going for. Ready, we're gonna do the heart just one more time. Same thing as the circle, texture, texture, texture. And we're three inches, we start pouring. Our cup gets about halfway full. We bring our spout down. We start pouring quickly to get our wide out to build our design and gently cut it through. Oh yeah, gentle, intentional, deliberate. That's what you are going for. Okay. Now let's move on to the rosetta. Okay, so we've got the heart. Next up is our rosetta. So now the rosetta is going to add a fun little technique. Um, it's going to add a wiggle, okay? So we're gonna see a wiggle happen here. We're gonna talk about it. Let's watch it first. All right, so for our rosetta, guess what? It's the same as the circle. They all start the same way, which is why you are starting with a circle. Okay, so same thing. Yep, oh wait, did you guys see that? Did you catch that? Watch that again. I did something different here, ready? and we're pouring and oh man i stopped why did i stop personal preference so remember i talked about that positioning for the spout so sometimes instead of just doing one continuous pour like i did for the circle on the heart i like to actually pause stop and get my spout in the right position and then resume my pour is it better is it worse totally depends up to you absolutely try it both ways um, especially if you are washing out the bottom of your pour consistently if you're the base of your pour is consistently washed out i would say stop and reposition it's gonna i think that will help to clear that out okay so now here comes the wiggle ready watch ready watch and so starts the same way and then look at that gentle wiggle gentle 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 ah Nice little wiggle. Um, it is not this like vicious thing, right? Like milk should not be splashing out of your pitcher. An easy way to practice this is again, put your, fill your pitcher like two thirds with water, bring your water to the edge and just kind of gently bounce it back and forth. Your water should be able to stay right there, okay? Here's the other big thing with the rosette that people make the mistake on. They don't pour fast enough, okay? So let's watch this rosette again. Let's see here. Okay, ready? We're gonna watch the rosette again. So, again, texture, texture, texture. It all starts the same way, people. Texture, texture, texture. You've gotta have your good milk in order to have good anything. Okay, ready, watch. See, look at how, oops, back it up, back it up. Sorry, guys. Okay, back to the Rosetta. Okay, ready? Watch the pace of the pour. Watch how much milk is coming out when I start that Rosetta, okay? We drop it down, slow down the pace, because I stop it, and look at, look at how much milk is coming out. You have to be aggressive with that milk. Your rosetta is a little bit like a ripple. It's like a wave effect. So if you aren't giving it that pressure to push those leaves out, your designs are always gonna end up small. And that's for any design. If you're ending up with small designs, you are probably not pouring fast enough as you're gonna see here in a minute. Okay, so that's our rosetta. Now let's go to our tulip. All right, tulip, we go to a smaller cup here. Tulip, we're gonna use a start and stop technique. Okay, so let's watch this one. All right, whoops, yep, here we go, ready? And we're going to go, here we go. All right, so starts the same way because it's all the same, guys. That's why you start with your circle. Now look, I do a base like a Rosetta, then you pick it up and then push, 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 push. Ready? Push, 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 push. Be aggressive with that milk for your tulip. I totally spilled on this one and then I tried to cover it up and my videographer did me no favors on this one. So I apologize for the hot mess that that one is at the end. But still, you get the idea. Let's focus on the pour here, okay? So tulip employs a start and stop in the middle of the pour. So we're creating these layers, okay? But the layers are pushed into each other. How are they pushed into each other, you ask? With the speed of the milk, which is why, again, you've gotta be aggressive with your milk to push that milk out because that pushes those other layers. That's that wave motion. That's that ripple motion that we're talking about. Ready? One more tulip. All right, texture, 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 texture. 
we're pouring in the center, we drop down just like we do for every single thing because we perfected our circles and we know all of this by now. And go, and go, and go. And now gentle, look at intentional, gentle. Your pull through should always be gentle, intentional, deliberate. It should never be this rushed thing because it will ruin any design that you do. All right, so now let's go on to, oopsie. All right, now let's go into those three Ps. I've already kind of introduced you to them, so let's break them down a little bit more because those three Ps, pace, proximity, position, these are the three things when you are looking at like, wow, why did my pour come out that way? It's going to be one of these three. I guarantee it. You send me a video, I'm going to be like, it's one of the three Ps. And I will always be able to nail it down to one of the three Ps because it's these three Ps that make up every good pour. So nail these down, tattoo them. Um, you don't have to tattoo them. Maybe write them on your picture though, something like that. Write them by your espresso machine, something to that effect to kind of remind yourself. Okay, so pace. We've talked a lot about that speed that we're looking for, right? Okay. So let's look at the proper pace. We've seen this video a bunch, but let's just watch it one more time for kicks. Okay, so our good pace, we pour in the center nice and steady when you begin your pour. Then you drop down and then we speed up. The speed gives us the big design. That's what makes our design balanced in our cup and balance is important for a beautiful design. So now let's look at what about if we have go too slow or too fast, okay? Let's look at that now. So if we go over to here we go, slide 16. Let's look at too slow. Nope, we're gonna go too slow. My design, my PowerPoint that I was going too slow, so it tried to speed me up. Okay, ready, here's too slow. If you pour, oops, we're gonna start with too fast because we're just not gonna fight it at a certain point. Ready, this is too fast. You pour, you start nice and steady, then you come close, and okay, that's too aggressive. I know I said be aggressive, but I didn't say dump your milk out. I said be aggressive. You are still in control of the milk. Do not be bullied by your milk. You are in control. You be the boss. So don't dump your milk like that, okay? You control it. You dump, you put it out nicely, but aggressively and quickly. Okay, now let's look at what happens with too slow, ready? So we just saw too fast. Here's what happens when you go too slow, when you're kind of afraid of your milk. Again, you're being bullied by your milk. You're like, I don't want to overflow my cup, so I'm going to pour slow. No, don't pour slow, because look what happens. Oh, nothing happens when you pour too slow. Why does nothing happen? Because all of your foam is staying in your pitcher instead of getting out on top of our crema where we want it. So you can't pour too slow, you can't pour too fast. Speed and the pace of your pour is huge when it comes to art. So when you're looking at how do you refine your technique, look at your pace. This is a huge one. I'm huge. When you're learning how to try, videotape yourself. You have to have somebody videotape your pour because then you can go back and watch it and see exactly what you do and kind of diagnose it. I'm huge on that. Even in classes, I'll videotape it with people and then we'll kind of break it down together. So videotape your pour. Okay, so that's our pace. Now let's talk about our proximity. So we've talked about distance, right? So the only way the design works is by laying our foam on top of our crema. If we don't get close enough, instead of laying on top of our crema, our foam falls beneath our crema, like in that initial pour. Or even worse, it kind of like splashes onto it and then we get all that beige, which we do not want. Because how many colors do we want in our designs? Two, brown and white. We don't want beige, we don't want any of that shading, okay? So let's look at what we're talking about here. Here is not getting close enough. Watch, ready? Everything's gonna go good. So, texture, notice the texture in every single one. Notice that tech technique is the same in every single one. Look how high I am, what's coming out? Oh, nothing's coming out. What's happening? Nothing's happening, nothing is happening. Why? Because I'm not close enough. My foam is sinking below my crema instead of laying on top of my crema like I want it to. So you have to make sure, when I say get close, watch the next video. You literally wanna lay, you wanna get your spout within half an inch of that crema to get your pour out there. Because we are literally placing that foam where we want it, okay? So, now let's talk a little bit about position, okay? Sometimes people look at the spouts like, oh, I don't even know how that happened. I don't even know why it's over there. It's over there because you put it over there, okay? The milk just doesn't go there. It follows wherever you put your spout. That's where the design goes. The design follows your spout, okay? So you have to put your spout in the exact position where you want your design. Example, watch this, ready? Okay, look, notice the texture in every single video. They all start the same, right? Now we're gonna drop down. Where's my spout? Where's my spout? Is it in the center? No, it's at the top of my cup. So where's my design? My design is at the top of my cup. That's not pretty, that's not balanced. That doesn't have good symmetry to it. 
okay? Your design follows your spout. I cannot stress that enough. So many people are confused at why the design ends up where they want it to. Now watch this one, okay? Again, your design follows your spout. So in this one, texture, 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 okay? We are pouring in the middle, just like we've been doing for all of them. We get nice and close and watch, ready? Instead of staying in the same spot, look, I'm pulling my pitcher back, I'm pulling my pitcher back, I'm pulling my pitcher back, and then I'm gonna pull through. Um, long skinny rosettas are because you're pulling back. They are you, okay? You're the problem if you have a long skinny rosetta. It's because you pulled back. Now sometimes you might want a long skinny rosetta if you're doing like a multiple design in a cup sort of thing, but if you're doing just a normal one, you probably wanna have those leaves kind of round out like we talked about and like we saw in the very beginning. So if you have a long skinny rosetta, it's cause you're pulling back. Cause what does your design do? It follows your spout. If you're pulling your spout back, then your design's gonna go back. But remember for a rosetta or for a tulip, we want that wave motion, we want that push. So one of the big mistakes that people make is when they're doing rosettas, they see the white or the leaves coming out and they immediately start pulling back. Don't pull back, you stay, you stay, you stay. Okay, now let's watch a few other designs. Let's talk about how we improve our pour, kind of take it to the next level, if you will. So you've seen on kind of all of my pours, I kind of move my pitcher around a little bit. Why do I do that? Well, it's called chasing the white. Okay, so watch this one. So in my very initially, and this will happen to you when you start your pour, when you initially start pouring, you're gonna notice it's very common to end up a little bit of white on top, okay? See that white right there? You pour directly over it, and then you sink it down, and that gives you that nice dark brown base that you're looking for, okay? So when you're chasing, so the reason you see us moving around like that is because we wanna have a nice, even brown surface. And a lot of times when you do do that initial pour, you get some white out. So just pour directly on top of it, and that will sink it and give you the surface that we're looking for. All right, let's look at another one here. The start and stop. So this is what I talked about kind of on my initial videos. You can start and stop, or you can do one continuous pour. Here, I don't know what I do. I stop, and then I go back to it, okay? We're gonna watch this Rosetta just one more time, because I really wanna talk about how you pause on Rosettas and some of the mistakes that people make. I know this one's a little bit fuzzy, so sorry, but watch this, ready? So, you come down, and Okay, get ready to watch really closely, okay? What, you, what I want you to watch is how while that bottom is building, we are not moving our pitcher. Do not move your pitcher at this point, okay? I would say the big mistake people make in Latte Art, and I know I've listed a whole bunch of them, is they do too much movement. You move away more than you need to. Remember, it's between the milk and the espresso. You're just kind of holding it, so hold it and stay put. People in general do too much, right? Like steaming, ups and downs and all arounds. No, 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 leave it. Same with your milk. Find your position, stay with it. Ready, watch this, okay? And we get close, watch. I stay, 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 and then I kind of jump back. So, those are my tips for how to improve your latte art. It is all very intentional. You have the control, pace, proximity, position. Always go back to those three. At Clatch Coffee, we focus on buying only the top 1% of coffee available. When we bring in a new coffee, we do a series of roasts to get the flavor just right, something we call peak of flavor, so that you can love the coffees as much as we do. Thank you, Heather. Wow. That was, uh, you know, I'm going to, there, there's going to be an energy ad out of, cut out of this, and I'm, I'm like the before picture, and she's the after picture.